presented by Ceramic Speed, part of the victory. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Denmark. We're brought to you by Ceramic Speed, and we're at beautiful Legoland, and I'm sitting at a table of legends. Chris McCormick, two-time Ironman world champion, Luke Van Lierde, former Ironman record holder and two-time champion, Thomas Hellriegel, 1997 champion, and the guy who had this, the fastest ever second place time. Guys, thank you so much for, for coming by. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Use the microphone there, boys. Use the microphone. Thank you. So, relay, when I first saw you guys doing a relay, I'm going, okay, who's going to get the short straw and get stuck running? Because nobody wants to do that 13-mile run. Who's running? Maka will run. <laughs> he's yeah. the youngest guy, right? He is young, he's fit. and <laughs> he's not young, I'm not fit. <laughs> and, he, and he has no option. Yeah, yeah. he has to. Yeah. He has to run. So, so Maka, talk a little bit about teaming up with these guys, because you've, you've raced both these guys in, in the past. Oh, it was a pleasure. I, I got approached by the guys here if I'd like to do a relay, and when they told me who my relay members were, I was like, oh, it'd be an absolute honor. You know, these uh, I didn't get to race these guys at their true prime. I was, uh, I was definitely a... A fan, and I got to see them at the at the latter stages of their career, and, and share many a race with them. But for me, that era of Ironman racing, watching these two guys go to war in uh, in ninety in ninety six and then yes. ninety seven, and um, was was spectacular. You know, I, I love that era of racing. I actually went to Roth when you broke the world record in in nineteen ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Saw that with my own eyes. It was just it's still, a, in my opinion, the greatest years of racing. It was it was great stuff. Yeah. And now, speaking of greatest years of racing. Your breakthrough in Kona was the sixth place in 05. Yes. Uh, yes. And that's the year where you had done everything right. You, you, had, the, you had the your nutritionist design specific stuff that you were supposed to drink. And you were blowing, again, blowing up. And then you run into Thomas Hellriegel yeah. on the way out to the turnaround. And what does Thomas tell you? <laughs> yeah, Thomas basically said, suck it up. I'd pretty much <laughs> dropped out of the race again. I was throwing up and he came past. I think he'd had a flat tire and... Mm. He said, hey, man, you've got to get back to, to Kona anyway. You've got to get back to, you know, the, the pier. I'm like, you may as well ride with me and, and stop drinking. Stop drinking that other stuff. Drink stop Coke. Drink, drink some Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I threw everything away, all the stuff that sports scientists had told me. And they, they specifically said, do not touch Coke. Yes. And um, Jet fuel. Jet fuel. And I, I ended up throwing all my stuff away, taking water and Coke at the next aid station. And I came good 10 or 15K later. And I ended up riding the back half of the bike course really well. And and posted the fastest marathon of the day and it was a breakthrough race for me and and it was really for me something i needed because i'd, I'd worn so much disappointment in kona and i yeah. just i really didn't think i could ever get it done there and uh to, to come through to fight through that and to and to see the ups and downs of this yes. race firsthand was uh yeah, definitely the breakthrough for me so luke you grab that mic from Macca there for a second your experience in kona was just the opposite you came there for the first time in in 96 and you had one niece right a couple times and were invited over didn't qualify had not run a marathon before and that day you break the course record go you know 804 uh catch thomas even though you had a penalty talk a little bit about that day and and that was had to be one of the best races ever for you well i think in history it was still the the island was really kind to us that year so it was yes no wind cloudy a little bit rain on the run so uh it makes a big difference in Hawaii. If it yes. would have been years like uh, 98, yes. I probably wouldn't have finished then. So big difference, the conditions. Well, it was interesting because I remember after the 96 race, because you had been told, oh, the winds are really bad, the winds are really bad. And you're going, well, I'm from Belgium. How bad can they be? And, and they weren't bad that year. Nope. So you thought like, this is, you know, they, they all think hard wind is mm -hmm. not hard wind. Yeah. Then 98. And 98 was... Tough year. I yeah. came second that year and I was pretty happy with that. Yes. Uh, because Peter was really strong that year, really, really strong. He yeah. was the only one who could follow uh, Thomas and Jurgen that yeah. year. Uh, I saw that happen and I decided, mm, I don't believe that they can hold that. But Peter did hold that. Yes. So uh, he got up to win two more times. So Yes. And I remember that you, you basically. I, we drove by you and you're sort of shaking your head. And afterwards you said that. The easiest win, uh, that the easiest win on uh, in '98 was tougher than the toughest win in '96. Yes, it is. <laughs> it was uh, the conditions. I don't know how the conditions were the years after that. There were a few more years that it was a lot of wins. 2001 was, 2001 was massive. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, that makes very, very a totally great. different race, and then you can get totally different athletes at the finish line. Right. So you're coaching Michelle Vesterby, 
and she you've been with what, a little over a year now yeah I've been coaching Michelle a little over a year now uh, Frederick's been with me for four or five years yes. now and Marino's been with me for a year and a half now and all three of them Kona is the goal for this year? Kona is the goal for Frederick, for Michel. Uh, Marino hasn't decided yet. I yes. know he won Brazil, of course, yes. and had a really good race down there. Uh, but he has time until the end of August to decide if he's going to compete or not. So, How tough is it as a coach? Because back then, once you won Ironman, you could pretty much you could, you go to Kona automatically. And you could do whatever you want to build in. Maka could do some sprint distance races and Olympic distance races. For yourself, is, it's, is it harder for the pros now to get the Kona healthy? Oh, yes, uh, not only to get healthy there, but to be in shape. Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm 100% sure that there are a lot of top athletes uh, racing Hawaii not at their best because they have done too many races and yes. they haven't focused on on doing not only long distance but also doing short distance because that's also important to work on your basic speed. And if you don't do that, then you you don't get that right. that 100% condition uh, by the time Hawaii comes. What's interesting, being in, in the States, obviously Hawaii is what everybody talks about, but Challenge Roth, a lot of people don't know that much about that race. Mac has, has won that race numerous times. You obviously set a, a world record there at one point. What is it about that race that's so special? Uh, the, the spectators, it's, I've, I've raced there once, and I've never experienced the atmosphere like that ever again. Yeah. I've been there a few times as a coach for my athletes, and even as a spectator, it's it's mind-blowing yes it's incredible so for me that is still the race to go to yes. and uh, to not as an athlete but also to uh, as a spectator what did you have to change with michelle from what she was doing to now to, she says she's in the best shape of her life and and, and just healthy yeah well uh michelle is, is is tough to herself especially that that is one of the biggest changes that i had to make she's really stuff tough to herself and uh, she needs to relax a little bit more, and she's doing that more now. So um, it's 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 a whole year that yes. you have to focus, and uh, not on, on on very short term, but on long term. And uh, that is maybe the biggest changes for Michelle. So so Thomas, we were talking a little bit earlier about the fact that you know your first two the your first two podiums in Kona were two second places and you had two phenomenal races you in 95 you had what 12 13 minutes off the bike ran sub three hours which is the magic formula you get 12 13 minutes and run sub three hours then somebody's got to make up 30 seconds a mile to catch you and mark allen ran what 242 and, and ended mm -hmm. up catching you uh, then the following year you have an even better race what 424 course record on the bike uh 246 marathon and this guy next to you <laughs> even with a penalty, comes and catches you. After those first two races, how hard was that to deal with? You knew you really could have won two races. You had the days, two great days. I mean, 96 was a little bit special because, they, you know, they looked after the full moon before. Yes. So it was end of October. So that uh, that's why I think it was also very quick and not so much wind. It mm. was, I think, 26th of October. Yes. And now it's all, always the second weekend in October because they looked uh, for the full moon. Right. Uh, so yes, that we used not, to do not, full moon, yeah. Yeah, so there was not so much waves. Okay. And so now I think it's very hard. Of, uh, uh, now it's... Um, uh, it's hard to beat these times because it was more. It's a little. It's north, yes. northern hemisphere, so it's a little bit more mild when it's end of October. But for me, it was uh, uh, very hard to keep focused after two times second. I mean, the first time I was very happy, of course, because it yes. was my first Hawaii. But then the second time, uh, Mark was not racing anymore, so I, of course I was one of at least one of the favorites. Yes. And uh, then it was I was not so happy anymore because I was I was very fit and was still second place and. Uh, yeah, the whole year '97, I was just thinking about uh, where to find uh, two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, because you really, you, was, you <laughs> I think combined, whole. you lost by 225 in '95 and lost by 201 in '96. Yeah, so, like four uh, minutes and lost two races. Yeah. So I was only looking for these two minutes the whole year. That <laughs> oh, was my. Two minutes. You know <laughs> that you're looking for 71 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think you, you. It's a little bit hard for me to explain in English, but you come. It's like you come on a trip. You know, yes. you think ah, your nutrition. Yeah, maybe 
I should change this and this. Maybe it's already one minute now, you know. Yes. And then, then you should do more this and this, or change the bike position, and then or other running shoes, and that's another 30 seconds or something. You always. I was the whole year was only thinking about this. Every training, every day, the whole year was two only, minutes, two minutes, two, two minutes. minutes. I have to find this two minutes. This was uh, I was always thinking about that the whole and time. And what I love, and then '97, you guys, the Germans took top three. Yeah. You and Jurgen and mm -hmm. Lothar. Yeah. So, Mac could talk a little bit about that, that mm -hmm. you had 71 seconds when you when you uh, lost to Norman in 2006. Did that play on your mind? That seven, where do I find 71 seconds? Oh, without question. I think, I think the hardest thing to do is come second, mm -hmm. especially yeah. when you have the perfect race. You don't know how you could go any quicker, yeah. how, what I could do any more. If, if you're fifth or sixth, it's not yes. a big... You're yeah. happy, you're top 10, it's good. You're yes. world, world, top 10 means world class, mm. but then fifth or sixth, okay. What it is what it is. But yeah. second is the you are the closest <laughs> to the win. That's yeah. the toughest. Yeah. And the thing I like about the era these guys are talking about, and it's very different, you know, for a lot of the people who are doing Ironman now, was the amount of races. Yes. The '97 year that, that Thomas won, these guys went head to head in Roth, broke the world record with the the biggest field in the world that yes. year. Like right. nowadays, that doesn't happen. There's one or two guys at, at events, but every Ironman was stacked. Absolutely, it really was stacked. at that time, yeah, right? Because there, there weren't that many of them. There wasn't that many, so you got to. It was quite difficult. You couldn't dodge your competitors if you wanted to be. You, you know, want to on make show. money. You, you want to make money. You had to race these guys week in and week out, so you didn't get to hide and and prep as much. You had to do that by right. not racing, which right. financially hurt you. Or you went to the big races and and went head to head. So I remember in '97, I drove to watch these guys in Roth. It was the big money year if you broke the. So world you record. weren't racing. No, I was an ITU athlete. I was a geek for this stuff. I'm like. <laughs> Mate, and he won uh, the yeah. yes, he won the world championships at ITU, right? I, I remember being in camp in uh, in uh, Trebin Shabak with in Han, a military base, with Brett Sutton, the Australian team, and I begged if I could go and watch Roth, and and I remember Brett Sutton saying, "What's that? Why would you want to? Like, dude, Luke Van Leer's racing, Thomas Helrigel's racing, Jürgen Zay, it's going to be unbelievable." Lothar later had just broken eight hours the year prior, and they're putting up all this money for the world record, yeah. and I was an absolute tri geek there jumping around like a spectator and and i watched these guys just tear it apart you were fourth that day it was just the most amazing it was, uh, seven hours yeah, 57, seven yeah. hours 57. Seven, 57. Yeah, yeah. so you you majored in having great races when other people had great races yeah yeah i was actually my claim to fame is well, not a claim to fame but i was standing at the spot in roth at the bottom of the hill where luke passed jürgen zach for the win to win the race and i was like oh my god and, and uh yeah, i saw it with my own eyes and, t and they're that for me as i said when i started the interview these guys were the ones that made me want to do iron man because right. they were such characters and such aggressive races they didn't dodge anybody they raced everybody they possibly could because it was a completely different different era and, and your pathway to kona was yeah you had to you had to perform in kona but your pathway there was by taking on the best week in and week out and then right. preparing and being at your best for kona and it's just a completely different looking sport now What's interesting to me is when you look at uh, yourself going over and racing Challenge Roth or Frankfurt, and you know it's it's like the German national championships, mm -hmm. and Luke the same type of thing. When you won over there, you're talking about every top German guy is there. That's a lot of pressure on the Germans, right? And Mac, I know you played on that when you were doing the press conference. It's like, listen, the pressure's on Norman, the pressure's on Ferris. This is their championship. I'm just gonna, you know, see what happens. Did you feel that that you were you're going against basically all of Germany? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, my first confrontation was at the pr at uh, press conference. Uh, 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 the briefing first. Oh, okay. uh, I remember we were sitting there in the room. Everybody was quiet, and then one by one we got to go to the front and have uh, an interview. And when it was my turn to go up there, I remember Jurgen. I mean. Nice guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that day, I mean, he went in and out of that room four or five times. He dropped the chair. He made some noise. I mean, but that's Jürgen. How, that's how he handled uh, his stress or tried to stress someone else. This, this is this is part of the game. Yes. Uh, and uh, so that was my first confrontation. I said, okay, it's going to be me against the rest. And uh, but I let my head clear and I knew what I was capable of doing and I sticked to what I was going to go out on the bike, how I was going to swim and bike and yes. stick. St I knew what I was capable of doing because I remember, I don't know if you remember that Thomas, we were having dinner with the sponsors two, three days before the race. Mm. We were sitting together at uh, having dinner at the table and then uh, I think I told you that story already uh, a while ago 
and uh, the sponsors asked us, uh, what is your weight? Oh, okay. And you were telling your weight, and then I was, I was, and you said, yeah, I'm weighing a little bit more than my top shape because this is biking here, mm -hmm. so you need to weigh a little sure. bit more. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I was weighing really, really low. I was weighing 68 and a half or something. Oh, that's way too low. I said, yes, but then I can run a marathon in 236 mm -hmm. with this weight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I did 236, and I needed the 236 <laughs> to win that race. So it was really st yes. stressy, but I, I could handle it. Yeah, it's hard to win on German soil. Yeah. Yeah. And was it? Did you feel pressure that the Germans are supposed to win there in Germany? Was it more important to win there than it was in Kona? I, f I felt much more pressure in Kona. Did you do? Okay. Yeah, because. Uh, it was for for us. I think that's the advantage. It's more comfortable for us. You know, we. I know. I was many times in road, and I know the course. I know the people. They, yes. It's my language, and it's. It just feels like home. Yeah. I go two hours with the car, and I'm there. And you can pack every stuff in the car. You know, you don't need to look up for the weight for flight. Right. So it's much. I don't. I feel it's just comfortable. Yeah. That's maybe the big advantage. So so Maca. When you were after 2006, after you know, coming in second to Norman, you were on a mission that following year, to yeah. basically to go after Ferris and Norman, right? And it was really important for you to go wherever they're racing because you want to make a statement. Yeah, I want to. I was. I actually left that race in 06, and that was the first time I'd, I. I had the perfect race, and and in my career, every time I'd had that race, I'd always won. You know, I always felt my Konas before that things went wrong right. and it just didn't go, but in, I couldn't have done any better. No. I, I really executed everything perfectly uh, and, and here's a guy who's 71 seconds in front, so I'm thinking, hell, how am I going to, how do I beat this guy? You right. know, if he has that race again, and I figured the only way he can do it is to, to go on the attack. And I think we'd had a bit of a falling out over a couple of statements that he'd said. I think you were with me when we, we sort of picked half a fight. We almost had Norman. a brawl at the post party. We had a punch up with Norman and, and the same with Farris. And I, and I thought, you know what? What have I got to lose? I'm going to go on the attack. So I, I threatened to race him every chance I, I had. And I, I flew to Dubai, raced Farris, and, and I made a mockery of him and, in a sprint race. And I, in, during the race, it was so unsportsmanlike, I guess. But Were you standing I, at the finish line standing with at your watch? I finish line my watch and said, mate, the difference between you and me, Farris, is... I can do this distance. You can't. You're a joke. <laughs> Don't ever pick a fight with me. And then, and then it was the same with with, uh, with. They wanted me to do either Frankfurt or Roth, and I said to the Frankfurt guys, "You get one shot at, at a, an appearance fee." And uh, Roth did the biggest one. And then obviously they painted this picture that I had avoided these the Germans. So I went to Roth. I tried to grab the world record and I missed it. And then I went to Germany and just I went to Frankfurt and heckled both both Norman and Farris in this race. Actually, that was the year I actually raced with Thomas on the bike. We, we rode together. We rode together in yeah, right, that year. Yeah. And, uh, Very quick. We rode really hard on the bike. It's the fastest I'd ridden. I really wanted to try and break the record. Yes. And uh, you know, just the run, the 236 run is just too quick. I think I ran a 41, but still missed the record by three minutes. And yes. We rode, I think, 414 or 15. Yeah, yeah. And Under 420. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. I, I had a perfect race. And from there, I was really pumped, so I went to Frankfurt and... I watched Norman and uh, Farris race, and I heckled them from the sidelines. I, did I you just, really? Oh, mate, I was horrific. Were you mad. like in a press truck or just? <laughs> no, I was, I, was, I was, as I'd run past, and I remember them doing an interview, and I was in the background hey, yelling out, hey, Norman, hey, mate, I'm here. I just won. I nearly broke the it's world like record. you were in Muhammad Ali yeah, yeah. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly in, what In 12 Muhammad weeks, we're racing in Kona, champ. 12 weeks, I'm going to kill you, mate. <laughs> and I'm going to watch you get humiliated tomorrow. And then he was on the, uh, he actually pulled out on the bike, and, and Farris did the run. And I was heckling them both on the run, just going, you, you guys are a joke. You can't even win your national championships <laughs> and you're trying to claim that you're world champion. Please give me a break. And, and it got pretty heated all the way into Kona. And, and I knew for me then it was, if I had lost that race, it was all over. I thought it was pretty interesting. Ferris didn't start, right? Yeah, he pulled yeah. out beforehand yeah, and Norman was puking about 30 miles in. Yeah, it's amazing what nerves will do. It's <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was my, my wife actually pulled me aside and said, you really need to, <laughs> to back it to off back it off a bit. But... Uh, you know, I, I sort of it fed my own insecurities yes. and it fed my own, you know, it's how desperate this was in yeah. my life. I, it was my what, fifth year there and I'd been close, but I hadn't won. And, I, and you really start to think, man, I'm going to go down as the guy who never won this thing. I have whatever it takes. And I, I don't regret it one bit. Norman right. and I still talk quite openly now. We're quite friendly about it. And, uh, but I don't regret it. I needed that in my life to motivate me to get out of bed to find that 71 seconds. And, and ultimately they... It's like tennis. I've always said you can win tennis by forcing errors or through unforced errors, and uh, and they made their unforced errors. They cracked. I didn't have to be better. They just cracked, 
and uh, it, it left the door wide open for me to take the title. So in Bahrain right now, Bahrain and Dubai, which mm -hmm. you're, you're intimately involved with. So we've had Challenge Dubai and Bahrain, which were phenomenal events this, mm -hmm. this last year in uh, what, November, December, December, yeah. December and, and February. February. Yeah. Now the Ironman's just announced that they're yes. doing races. So will those races be like a month apart and just... The, no, the, the, I think the challenge race is November 20, okay. uh, the night race, right. and um, Ironman will be December 4. Okay, December so pretty close together. Two weeks apart, and there'll be another, there's another announcement, not through Bahrain, but one of the other yes. Middle Eastern countries is announcing a, another, a, race. another Ironman. You heard it here first. Yes, yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, so there's a lot happening in this part of the world, and they had to fit it around the Dubai Marathon. There's a whole bunch of events going on, so people are like, why did they cram it so, so close? But... There is actually a lot of events going on in the region at that time of year, and you can't move too late into January, February, because you've got all the cycling races at Tour of Dubai. And, right. And so there's only a small window of, of races. And, and this part of the world realizes that, you know, they've got a real health problem. And, and the way to, to deal with that is to have events that, that the community participates in, and that's fun runs, triathlons, and, uh, and these sort of events. So they're really getting proactive in the endurance racing world. And, and you know, it was always going to be there for Ironman. Ironman is a, is a is the gold standard to some degree of the sport, and they're always going to move their way in there because they 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 put on events that that, that the regional ultimately want to take on. So I'm imagining you're not that excited about running a half marathon tomorrow. No, I, I was originally told I was doing the bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> Until Who about was originally going to run the half marathon. Luke, Luke was. <laughs> well, he's the fastest runner. I, I think I have a 115 in me to do. Um, yes. I, yeah, I, I think I have that, but I have a, a problem on my calf at the moment. And mm, I don't want to take the risk that no. after halfway that I have to walk because of, of yes. the problem that I have you on my calf. You want to let these guys down. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to do the swim in that cold The young guy water. has to run. Yeah. Yes, but that's I the way it should work. I don't have a 115 in me. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you have a 115, but then yeah. you have another couple of miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, Luke, when uh, when Craig Alexander broke your course record in Kona, was that hard for you, or are you one of those guys that, hey, records are meant to be broken? No, I, I expected two guys to break it. It was Greg or, or you, Chris. Yes. So, uh, it was one of those two guys who was going to break it. That was what I expected. Yes. So, uh, no, records are there to be broken, and uh, I don't have any problems with uh, whoever, whoever breaks my record. Now it's uh, Sebi, Sebastian Kienle. He's good. Yeah, yeah. With a good now, last year, it was... A, quite a windy day yes uh, with uh, a good day with not much wind and not too hot I think he will come very close to uh, yeah. under 810 definitely he can uh, Rodino as well like yes not, oh yeah he can uh, yeah. I think he can ride much faster you know because he will not he will not run super fast right but uh, I mean he did like 420 something in a, a lot of wind so he will do like 415 or something and he and can then, run 255 250? Yeah, 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 about yeah, yeah. Yeah, 250, two, yeah. 253, yeah. 254, yeah. So, Thomas, I look at from 95 through, I mean, you were like second, second, first, eighth, sixth, fifth, third. You were you had like eight top tens in, in there. Was that important to you to be consistent, to get there and, and be on the pole? I know if you want to win every time. Yeah, but yeah, but maybe it's just a little bit my mentality because I try to prepare as good as possible and... Uh, try to uh, be focused on what I'm doing yes. and so it's just a result of uh, what I'm doing yeah, it's of course uh, you go there to to win to win yeah but uh, at the end it was a good uh, <laughs> oh my god really good when did you know that you couldn't win anymore was there a point where it was like okay I'll be I'll, I'll, I want to get top 10 but I, I can't be a contender anymore yeah it's 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 not like on a, on one day. I no. think it's a broke cumulative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the young guys are coming, and you see, though, they are very fast. They come from Olympic distance. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. they are all very good runners, good swimmers. Yeah, no. Now with Sebastian, not so good swimmer. It's uh, very rare at the moment. Yeah, they're all usually when they like they're Frodeno. Yeah. yeah, they come from Olympic distance. They are super fast in the running. They can run 30 something, 31 minutes at least. Yes, and uh, swim super fast. And the biking, then it's only uh, if they want to do that. You know, Frodeno was all also one of these guys who did a lot of mileage when he did Olympic distance. Yes, I mean now some of the g young guys they do not much mileage. They will, I think they will. Not many of them will come to Ironman racing because they can make a lot of money not doing Ironman yeah, racing. Yeah, you can yeah. make a living doing. And they, they are not. They have another mentality of training. Yeah, and 
And uh, but some of these guys, like Relat, also he did uh, t to qualify Olympics. His last time he did too many miles on the bike. I was training with him in Lanzarote, long rides and too fast. You know, you should when you do Olympic distance, you should do short rides and easy right. to do the hard swims and hard runs. Yeah. And so, but they can be strong in Ironman, but it will, will not happen anymore so yeah. often. Yeah. So, Luke, as a coach, you your career, you, when you were healthy. You were awesome. And I was healthy. That was the thing, right? You got injured a lot. Yes. And th when you look at that, does that does that guide you a little bit with your athletes so that you know they don't have that same type of experience? Yeah, it's an now it's an advantage that I got injured so much because I know a lot. Uh, yeah. When one of the athletes has a certain problem, then I can prevent it getting into a real injury. Right. And so uh, and the most important training of the week is rest. So when the guy is over training and getting tired or starting to complain about certain problems, yes. then uh, as a coach, you give them rest uh, because you need that. Um, but yeah, injuries was uh, my whole career and, and even after my career because uh, <laughs> Even now, still, I get injured, of <laughs> course, so I, I have to keep watching out. Uh, yes. But, yeah, that's, that's part of that's the game. That's racing. Yep. It's racing. When you're, when you're hot, you got to go with it, right? Yep. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can't back off. Guys, have fun tomorrow. The young guy gets to do the half marathon. I have the, the, sh <laughs> the short straw. You, Maka gets the short straw. I like that. The elder statesman. I will swim. I will bike. You will run. <laughs> Our guests, five Ironman World titles sitting here on the stage with us. Again, we are brought to you by Ceramic Speed. This is Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Denmark at beautiful Legoland. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back. Presented by Ceramic Speed, part of the victory.